I want to go home. I was three years old when I said that. I was lying in bed in my parents' Chevy Chase apartment when those words left my lips. I said them out loud, I want to go home. I remember it was, it was dawn and the air was buzzing with uncertainty. What did I mean? I was home. I was home. When the organizers of TED came to me and, and asked me to craft something about this topic of home, I thought, well, I, I laughed. And I, I thought to myself, well, as a drug addict, I was homeless more times than I care to recount. And as a person of transgender experience, I wasn't at home in my own skin for decades, so I'm, I'm not exactly sure what I bring to this homey table. <laughs> for me, before there was home, there was displacement. Before I was a transgender man, a recovering alcoholic, an artist, a writer, an activist, a queer, I was apparently alone and not home. How does a three-year-old child know that they are not home? Is home something like, like love that can be defined by its absence? Is it like love in that its, its experience is universal, personal, outlined by actions and feelings? For me, as a transgender child, I had no true north. My body was elsewhere, and my feelings were there to be altered, enhanced, or erased. I can tell you what I know, that by three, I had already bumped up against the assumption that other people made about my relationship to my, myself, which is that I was a girl, and therefore supposed to act this way or that way, and that there were behaviors and desires that I wasn't actually entitled to, whether I felt them or not. By six, it had begun to become clear to me that I was a little different than my peers, who apparently did not want to spend their morning crafting mustaches and did not want to spend their afternoon lovingly recreating the live and athletic torsos of Archie, Jughead, and uh, Reggie. By six, I already knew I didn't have what it takes to be a boy. I didn't have the goods. The birth of my brother successfully erased any fantasy I may have harbored uh, of transcending this body somehow. It was also the birth of a heartbreak so catastrophic and absolute that I tucked my heart away and I never looked back. I became nomadic and I left my body and my mind to roam. Now, if you've ever been in 12-step recovery groups, and by now, most of us have, no judgment. You may have heard this narrative, which is that um, we alcoholics and drug addicts have this, this feeling. It's, it's this feeling that you got the manual. It's the sense that um, most of us have this feeling from a very early age that we are somehow unique, isolate, alone. The hallmark of addiction is this distortion of perception. This means I am only ever um, <laughs> two bad ideas away from a complete break with reality. Now, if you've ever experienced road rage or um, jealousy and discovered that that thing that you were absolutely committed to believing that you were certain and righteously sure had taken place had not actually happened at all, then you too, my friend, have had a complete break with reality. It, this might be the hallmark of being human. For me, this two steps to a mini psychosis starts with this idea, I have no home. 
and homeless I was, without a grounding in the body, without a sense of community, with an ache to always, already, be somewhere else, feel something else, that in fact, home was somewhere else, you might say, I was born homeless. Gender can be a part of this experience of home, even as we begin to unpack gender as um, per personal, not dichotomous, non-binary, there is something essential about it. If I can't get there, be there, then where am I? And please do not mistake me for saying that male and female are essential because oh boy, oh girl, I am not. We have a, in, in, in Alcoholics Anonymous, there, there's a, a, a saying that only you can identify yourself as an alcoholic. Well, this is true for gender, too. Your gender is for you to claim. But if your Happy Meal isn't on the menu, <laughs> what do you order? I had, uh, I had been injecting testosterone for a couple years. Um, when I had this experience, I suddenly realized that I felt in the world. 50 years old and I'm walking around and I, my feet are touching the ground. It was remarkable and disturbing. I felt like I belonged in the world. It was a little thing, but it was a big thing. Imagine, if you will, having finally landed on Earth and discover, I'm in hostile territory. <laughs> There are those who would brand me and my kind a deviant, a sex monster, a lurker of public restrooms, preying on the innocence of women and children. They would deny me protections in housing, health care, and employment, all with this sense that you need protection from me. I thought when I became a white man, I'd be on the top of the food chain. <laughs> Lucky for me, I pass out there as male. My trans sister brothers, whose gender is personal and not culturally obvious, are shunned and killed for theirs. This is where the whole um, identity as a piece of home can go truly awry. Um, if, you're, if the safety component of your home depends upon protection from others, then I'm, <laughs> I'm screwed. If not me, someone else. I don't know if this is a, I don't know if this is a common experience for trans people. I, I suspect it is, but I don't want you to think this is somehow representative or universal. And here's what I haven't said to you yet, but I want you to hear now. I love being trans. I love it. I don't love being uh, an addict, but I love everything that recovery from addiction has bestowed on me. Transgender might be the single best thing that's ever happened to me. Can you imagine this kind of travel? You've been to Egypt. I've been to woman. You did a cruise down the Amazon. I switched my neurochemistry from female to male. <laughs> Winning! <laughs> now, as a, as a drug addict, I was homeless, not once, not twice, but at least half a dozen times. And as a trans man, my experience of my gender meant that I could not fully situate myself in my own skin. Nonetheless, because I was forced to turn my welfare over to uh, a peculiar amalgam of uh, similarly minded people, I fell into a community who genuinely wanted the best for me. I think Shouldn't all communities want the best for one another? My people 
said to me, we don't understand what you're going through, but we want you to be whole and we want you to be happy. And we want you to feel at home here in Carborough. And we want you to feel at home in Chapel Hill. And we want you to be at home in Raleigh and in Durham. And we will protect you from harm. And we will show up for you as best we can. And we will love you as best we can. And that, ladles and jelly spoons, it's exactly what happened. I'm home. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>